Hi everyone and welcome to Action for the Patient. I'm Crescenzo, a Sony M1 camera shooter and in this episode we will go back in time. I will go back in the timeline when the manufacturers they were, they were providing us ELC entry-level camera at the price tag of around 350 grams. Yes, that is less than 400 bucks. So, I already hear some of you telling me, okay, Chris, but for 400 bucks, I already have my smartphone, it's including a nice camera. And I would answer you that you are almost right, but only almost. I hope in this episode that I will be able to show you that it's the importance to have an entry level camera in your kit, especially an entry level, of course, an entry level camera that is able to use your lenses your usual lenses and to illustrate I will take one of my experiments. So last September I was invited to a wedding with my girlfriend and of course I was invited as a, as a guest not as the photographer. So the fact is that I have already been in this year in two weddings and one in one of them I've been using the S7R Mark II and as I have just received my new camera, the N99 Mark II, I was very excited to be able to use it in this type of scenario because seriously the S7R Mark II has delivered perfectly during the wedding so I knew that the N99 Mark II would do the same as it is the same sensor. Fact is my girlfriend was reminding me that the previous wedding before this one I had taken my A77 Mark II with my Sony, I think it was the 2075 2.8 that is now recording this video. And the uh, fact is that I didn't enjoy that much during the party because I was mm, very troubled about the gear. I didn't want anybody to put wine on my body or my lenses. I didn't want to have any chalk or whatever. So it's true that thinking of this and knowing that we are talking about an N99 Mark II that is a 300 to 400, 3000 to 4000 gram uh, camera. <laughs> that is uh, a lot of money, you know. So, that is typically the scenario when I was thinking, okay, so I could go lighter with the body and with the lens. How to do that? Probably, what? Well, how could I use my now dedicated macro camera that is my APS-C A58 that is a 24 megapixel sensor in APS-C and it is able to use any of my M lenses so I was thinking how could I do that in the end I had this opportunity because I already own a 50 uh, for full frame a 51.7 or a 35 1.8 in APS-C and it's true that the combination of the APS-C body and the 35 F1.8 did deliver surprisingly well during this wedding. I have to say that I didn't care much if I forget the camera in one of the sofa during the party or during the event on the table, on the, on the ground near a plant or whatever. So. It's not like if you don't care of your camera, but it's true that comparatively a 300 to 400 camera and lens kit compared to a more than 2000 or even 800 camera and kit, putting in the balance, you can, fi you can figure out that you are more relieved if anything happened to this type of gear. So that is the type of scenario in which I would say that any entry-level camera that is able to use your lenses, any of your lenses of usual, could help you here. Now, I will be more uh, specific, and for this I will illustrate with examples that I have taken. Imagine you are in action photography. I have to tell you that and the camera that is in your smartphone won't bring you anywhere because imagine you want to take pictures of I don't know a car that is on a, on a track on a track there or someone that is running or things like that 
with the APS-C camera of 300, 350 or 400 baht. You can put any length between 200 and 200 and 300 millimeters and here you go. You can get your shot. You have better control for aperture or shutter speed and you are you have the better handling because you are handling a DSLR or a mirrorless if you want to go mirrorless. So in the ergonomics it's better. Now considering proxy and macro I have to say that in this type of scenario both the ERC camera APS C and your smartphone I will put them as a tie, you know, because most of the time in the proxy you don't need the autofocus. It's true that the smartphone is working very well in autofocus in proxy mode. The camera ERC is working, but most of the time in proxy or macro we are using manual focus. In this specific area, the smartphone is not so good measure because you are not able to use the any ring to focus or defocus as you want if you want to do some abstract or whatever so that is already two point two topics where the camera is above or tied with the with the smartphone now let's see another example landscapes for landscape photography most of the time you will use manual focus with a tripod it is true that I have seen people in their journey in their travel using tripods for smartphone nowadays so it is a proof that the tripod is still the better way to go now to be honest anybody that is in landscape photography will tell you that the ELC will be better than the smartphone even if it is a 300 ELC so for landscape photography too here you are sure that the camera will be better all of these points have brought me to my transition that is a tribute to my dedicated, actually the currently dedicated macro photography stuff, the APS-C A58 of Sony. Because this camera that I have bought for 350, 360 euros with the kit lens, by the way, that was the 18 to 55. I have to say that this camera, and it's a shame that is not existing anymore in Sony, in Sony line but it's amazing the features that are included in this camera starting with the fact that this camera includes a motor for AF if the lens doesn't have the motor inside for autofocus so that is not the type of camera you can imagine that it includes the motor but all the M1 cameras are including the motor for AF if the lens doesn't have any motor. That is huge. Second point is that this camera, I was surprised by the fact that it's including the bracketing in continuous or in single mode for three frames in raw mode. Meaning that I was able to take some pictures handheld when I was starting. I didn't have any tripod. So I have been taking some shots in churches, for example. And it's true that the fact that it has the continuous shoot with continuous shooting with the bracketing included for white balance, for shutter speed, for, or for ISO, it is true that it's a major plus. For example, to make some HD, HDR, I've been able to make beautiful HDR of uh, churches from uh, different places, and it's, it's amazing. Another feature that I have been amazed by is the face recognition of the camera of the A58 because this camera okay so it was released for 2012 okay so that is six years now seven years now. and it is true that the face detection is amazing you have the ability to register the faces of the persons that you want to prioritize in your during your portrait session and that is a major plus now I make a tribute for the A58, but we have to admit that it has some features that are lacking, like the micro focus adjustment that doesn't exist, and that is a major problem here for this type of for the when you want to shoot in autofocus mode, no? Because you cannot, you know, between the combination of your camera of your camera and your lens, 
you have to make the microfocus adjustment. If it is not available, you are a bit um, locked in your way to use the autofocus because you have to check which spot of the AF is the best to use. To conclude with this episode guys, I just want to tell you I I have been amazed by what Sony was delivering in the APS-C in the entry-level market. Nowadays, if you want to have this type of features, you will have to go with Canon. And I have to say that I have seen the camera and it's not so strong. But, so, it's another story. But, what is for sure is that I hope with this episode I've been able to show you the importance to have a flat Thank you.